What I'm trying to create today is a hex patterned insert for a square container that holds some pencils. So I'm doing this in Fusion 360 and this is the final kind of pattern I'm going to show you how I created. So I'm just going to click on New Design and then click on the Create Sketch and we're going to make the plane of the sketch in the XY plane so it's suitable for 3D printing. So first I'm just going to put in some dimensions. So the inner radius of the hexagon. So 15 millimeters is the diameter that I want spacing for the pencils and radius obviously divided by two. We're also going to want to give this a wall thickness. And I'll set that to 1.2 millimeters. And we're going to be repeating a pattern here. So I'll give it a pattern spacing. And since these are adjacent hexagons, it's going to be the radius of one. So it's the, the distance from the center of two hexagons. And that equates to just being the radius of one hexagon, the radius of the other hexagon, and the wall thickness in between. So it's two times the radius, add on the wall thickness. The pattern I'm going to be creating is horizontal in one direction and it's going to be at an offset angle of 30 degrees and you'll see why that is in a minute. So we're going to create a hexagon and to do that we're going to select the polygon tool and we're going to choose the circumscribe polygon because we're going to be specifying what the inner radius of that hexagon is. So I'm just going to select the origin and I'm just going to rotate so that the hexagon is pointing, pointing up the way. So that just means that point there is on the y-axis. So we're going to give this a dimension. So I'll press the D key for that. I'll select the origin and one of the sides and I'll just drag down and that's going to be the inner radius and just hit enter. Now we want to give this hexagon some width so I'm just going to select the offset tool and select the hexagon and then I'll just drag it out a little bit and this is going to be the wall thickness and I'll just hit enter. Now we also want to draw a line for where we want to repeat these hexagons. So these hexagons we want to repeat horizontally and also up. So I'm going to create L for line. I'm going to select this point here. And then I'm going to select dimension tool. Select that line there and that one. And we want that to be the pattern angle, so which is 30 degrees, and just hit enter. So I'm just going to add a, another one in, in degrees, so this is the pattern angle, so degrees and 30 degrees, and now we'll just edit this angle here, so I'll just double click on that, and that's the pattern angle, hit enter. And then this isn't part of the actual hexagon, so I'm just going to press X to change that to a construction line. And then we'll just stop the sketch. So I'm just going to go to the isometric view and then click on the extrude icon. Select the wall of the hexagon and just do 10 millimeters high. I guess I could put in a dimension for that. So I'll just edit that feature. And we'll just change that distance to the wall height. And say OK. So now we've got one hex again. And now we want to create more hexagons by using a pattern. 
So I'm just going to click on the light bulb to show that sketch because that's got the angle that we want the pattern to be at. So now we're just going to go down to the create pattern tool. I'm going to create a rectangular pattern. So the thing that we want to replicate is the body. So that's just the body that was created here. And we're going to select that one. Now we're going to select the directions we want to replicate this pattern. So we're going to replicate on the x-axis. And that's selected the first one. And on the 30 degree axis here as well. Now we just want to specify the distance from the first shape to the next. So we we'll use spacing for that. And I want to have 7 wide on the x-axis and 5 wide on the 30 degree axis. And we're just going to put in the pattern spacing that we calculated earlier. And the same again on the 30 degree axis. And just to make it easier if I want to cut the shape later so that the bottom left shape doesn't get cut off. Um, it gave me issues when I did that before. We'll make that symmetric so that that shape stays in the in the middle. So you see that the suppress uh, checkbox is ticked and what that's going to enable me to do is to remove some of the hexagons. So I want something that's in a kind of a rectangular pattern to fit inside a rectangular box. So I'm just going to remove so now we have five wide here and kind of five tall. And that's going to fit into the rectangular shape that I have. And then we just click on OK. And now we can just click on that home icon. And you see we have the the initial shape that I need that I showed you at the, at the start. So one thing I notice here, I want to remove these two hexagons. So I'm just going to right click and say edit feature. So it's a bit unfortunate that it's making you select each of these hexagons again. A little bit annoying. Okay, so that's what I, I want. So now I'm going to start to create the rectangular shape that the hexagons got to fit in. So I'm going to create another sketch. And that's going to be on the, the XY plane. So I'm just going to minimize that so I can select that plane more easily. And then I'm going to press R for the rectangle tool. So I'll just select the first corner. And the second corner. And now I'm just going to give this some dimension. So I'm going to press the D key for that. And I'm going to select the upper edge of the rectangle and I want that to be 85 millimeters and then I'm going to select the other edge and I want that to be 81.6 millimeters so I'm just going to click the select and select that edge there and just drag that across. So one of the next things I want to do is to um, draw some printed edges from here up to the edge of where the box is going to be and that should just keep the hexagon centered within the box because this hexagon is just an insert. Okay so the next thing I want to do is to make this rectangular box uh, equal distance from each side so I'm going to press the L tool to draw a line from this point up to the construction line. And then again the L tool for drawing a line from that point down to the construction line. Again the L tool. So I'll just go from the midpoint of this face. So when I'm in midpoint it's going to change to show that triangle. And I'll just press the escape key. 
So now I'm just going to click on the equal symbol down there for the constraint. So I want that line and this line here to be the same length. And I also want that line and that line to be the same length. And I'm just going to select each of those lines and press the X key to change them to construction lines because they're not going to play part of the, the actual shape. So just this last one. Okay. So now I want to um, create some walls from the hexagon shape out to where the, the rectangular construction lines are on the outside. So here I'm going to press R for rectangle and I'll just place the two corners and then just do the dimension tool and select the bottom edge there and we'll just make that one wall thickness and then I'll choose the midpoint of that one and choose where the two construction lines cross and that's moved that rectangle across to, to match. And I'll just do the same thing down the bottom here. So R for rectangle. And then D for dimension. Again choosing the top of that rectangle. So we see at the moment they're just rectangles on that bottom plane. So now we want to extrude those. So we'll just click on the extrusion tool and just going to select each of those. So I'm just going to control, control click each of those. And that's going to be the wall height. And we want to make that join. So we'll have a look at, see what that looks like. Okay, so that looks good. So we'll just say OK on that. So these hexagons are going to be the at the top of the container. And that's where the pens or pencils are going to uh, be sat in through. So now we need to build up some legs. So if we treat this as the, as the top, and this is the, the base section of the top, what I'm now going to do is select the extrude tool and I'm going to select four I'm going to select four of these hexagons if I can select them okay so I've got four of those and I want these legs to be let's see 80 millimeters Okay, so that should do the, the feet. So my container has a, a sloping base, so I need to cut off part of these legs. So I'm just going to press I so that I can measure what the distance is between these two points here. So that's 38, 38 millimeters, And I know that my slope is around about 1 in 10. So if I just uh, multiply that, figure by my slope then I need to have a change in height of 3.86 millimeters over that distance. So I'll just hit escape and create a, a sketch and I'm just going to select one of these walls here. So I'm just going to mark a point um, point uh, there and I'm going to defy dimension and I'll just select that point and the top of there and we said that was 3.86 millimeters and then I'm going to draw a line from that point to there so that's going to give me the general angle that I need to cut so I'm going to change that to a construction line 
and then I'm going to create a new line that goes from that point um, just to beyond the shape. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to create a shape that I can cut through uh, those legs. So it needs to be parallel, so I'll just select parallel constraint and you want that line to be parallel to that one. And then I'll create L for line again and just select that point and we will just draw a few points and just hit escape and then we'll say stop sketch. So we're going to select that and control click that one as well and E for extrude and we want to cut through all the objects and we just want to flip the direction of that let's just fit this to size so we can see what's going on here um, so we should be able to just select that to all ok and then flip and we want to select cut and we can see that it's cut off that there so now we can just say ok ok so now we have the sloping feet and when that's installed let's just have a look at what that would look like jumping mad stop ok so when <laughs> so yeah so the, the top of that's going to be level and that's got the slope of the base so now it will just send us to the 3D print program so select the component I want to send and it's going to just send it to Slicer. So here we have the model imported into Slicer. And now I'll just generate some G code for that. And since it's quite thin walls, I won't need to put any fill in. So I'll just get a name, in this case a hex pencil insert. So now I'll just save that to an SD card and then take it to the printer. I find the easiest way to get the prints off the bed when they're sticking really firm is to use a, a, a scraper with a really sharp blade and just be careful that you don't damage the surface and then just finish it off with a scraper. Yeah, done. So this is the finished product. This was the initial print that I did. So that was done with, uh, I think, two millimetre walls and that's actually quite solid. Um, this new one with the 1.2 millimetre walls I think is a bit thin these are actually quite flexible. I'd imagine if I put any pressure on whatsoever and these would probably break. You can hear this creaking. So I think if I was printing this out again I'd think about using a thicker wall. But for what it's for, it was for going in this rack. So, so that fits in there nicely. It doesn't have to be too strong being in there. So, you know, most size of pens it should cope with that. And then space for some real smaller ones just around the outside. So it should just hopefully make finding pens and just getting them out that little bit easier. Um, it's not so good when you've got all your pens just like that, it just makes it a little bit harder to find things. So, all in all, I think a good job. So I printed out another copy for the other side of this. That was with a wall thickness of... 1.6 millimeters, and you can see there that it's a lot stronger. So that there. So it's a big difference from 1.2 to 1.6 millimeter wall thickness for for strength there. Cheerio.